Hi, everybody. This is Quint Lears with NewHomesales.com. I'm here with my friend, one of my mentors, John Palumbo. Um, when I first, first got into the business, I had to figure out, you know, what, what skills do I need to learn? So getting into the National Association of Home Builders, I wanted to get my MIRM. That's the M-I-R-M. That's the Master in Residential Marketing. My first instructor for IRM 4 was John Palumbo and Roger Fien. Um, Roger Fien's no longer in the business, but I knew um, th both of those men were very special. Um, John has been, ever since that class, I knew he was one of the best, and I've been following him. I've been reading his books, um, uh, going to his keynote speak, uh, speeches that you do. Um, you've been a huge encouragement to me personally in my career, and it's, uh, it produces results. You, you have training that produces results. Uh, matter of fact, the, the keynote that he did today was sell the results. Tell me a little bit about the, the training that you did at IBS uh, 2016. Well, the program that we did today was just that, sell the results, the psychological artistry of selling in reverse. And we just discussed the seven drives of human behavior that cause people to buy when salespeople use them properly to drive the results of what the customer really wants, not what the salespeople want to sell. You travel all over the country, I mean, and internationally, you meet sales managers, sales trainers. What's the one thing that you think is maybe the biggest mistake? What's the one thing that salespeople are missing today? It's, it's a simple answer. It's the same thing as when most kids get out of college. What do they stop doing? I'm asking you. They stop learning. And that's the biggest problem for most salespeople. They stop learning so they no longer read books because they don't have time because they're too busy trying to make money money doesn't come from just showing up at work money comes from getting better at what you do when you show up at work so most salespeople stop learning they stop listening to audios they stop their success track of where they're going I'm still investing thousands of dollars each year literally thousands of dollars each year in audio training live training seminar events when I get to go to them in order to stay on top of my part of the business and so when I see salespeople who are not even willing to spend twenty five dollars to go listen to a speaker or to go learn something I can pretty much guess where their income levels are they're also the same people that if they do invest to go listen their phones are going off every five minutes they're returning texts they're listening to things on their phone they're making phone calls here's a little secret the highest producers in the business turn their phones off when they go somewhere and they sit and absorb the information. Then they go out and resume business. The lowest producers leave their phone on, they take their texts, they take their messages, and they go out in the hall and talk on the phone with what they think is big time business, but most of the time is little time business. While the high producers are sitting in the room getting all the information, they have to listen twice as hard because they know most of what most speakers are going to talk about. So they have to listen for the very tiny nuggets that they might walk out with that could change their business literally that same day. One key word, one key idea, one key concept. And so there's the difference between the low producers and the high producers. Back to your question, what is the biggest mistake? They stop their learning process because they're too busy trying to earn a living. And guess what? They'll continue to earn a living rather than letting it living being earned for them through their persuasive powers, their influential powers, and their ability to sell more rather than work harder. That was a mouthful. I know. No, no. Dude. Look, that's why you're good. But, um, one of the things in your books, um, and it was either you know sell to the top, middle, bottom of the market, sales gnosis, um, the sales DNA. It was the sales DNA. By the way. If you go to Builder Books, you know who John Palumbo is. He's the guy with all of the books that people are carrying out and purchasing. It was the sales DNA, and it said that the master closures, the master salespeople are not ashamed to use the word sales. Why did you put that in there? That, that fascinated me. And, and you, I actually changed the um, my title, if you will, um, on my business card and some other things on my website. It meant a lot to me, but... Tell me your thought about that and why that's important right now, the, that salespeople be comfortable with the word sales and, and their career. Most salespeople, I see their business cards and they've got everything but salesperson on it. They've got counselor, they've got team leaders, they've got community 
um, something. And they've got some of the most creative titles I have ever seen that you can put down for what is nothing more than I am the salesperson here. But they don't want to put salesperson on because they have a bad connotation or somebody in their organization has a bad connotation of what salespeople are supposed to do. And they are afraid that the general consumer doesn't want to deal with a salesperson. So they give them different titles. And in reality, it still boils down to the same thing. They are the salesperson. Personally, if I go in somewhere, I don't want to talk to the team captain. I don't want to talk to the community leader. I want to talk to the salesperson here. They're the ones that should have the most knowledge, the most information, and be the most persuasive and to convince me, do I want to buy whatever it is I'm looking at today or do I not want to buy it? I actually want to listen to the sales presentation. I don't want to listen to what somebody wants to try to give me to get around you know, whatever it is they, they're trying to become. But we are salespeople. And if you're ashamed of being a salesperson, you're not going to act like a salesperson. And if you don't act like a salesperson, then you're simply going to be an information provider. And you're going to hand out four or five of your cards when you people leave and say, if you, here are my cards, I've given you a few extras, which, by the way, those don't do anything but go into the garbage can. Nobody was interested in taking barely one card from us, much less five or six cards. And so unless you impress them enough that they want your card, uh, and we'll keep one card. You're lucky. They're not going to pass your cards out for you like a lot of people believe. So that's that's all it boils down to. We are sales professionals. We need to be proud to be sales professionals. And stop worrying about whether somebody thinks if you're in sales, you're going to bug them. The truth is you're going to service them and take care of them the way they need to. And today's consumer expects you to follow up with them they expect you to help them make those decisions and if you don't then they don't feel like they're getting the assertiveness that they should get from a good sales professional i didn't say aggressiveness i said assertiveness a good salesperson should be assertive they don't have to be aggressive and there are two different meanings there that's fantastic uh, john if if you're not in new home sales in this industry you may not you may not know john if you're in the business you know john palumbo um, he's the guy that uh, people want to watch that people follow everybody knows what you do you inspire people you motivate people you train people um you ins- you, you 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 are a leader and a servant in the industry my question to you is why do it why get up travel all over the country um what? How do you do that? What? Why? Because I get rich doing it. <laughs> <laughs> this guy. <laughs> oh, um, if you've ever written a book, and, and I think you're you're working on one, you, I think you tell me. It, you know, writing books are labors of love. You, you don't get rich doing those. They're labors of love. Wait, what? I'm just kidding. <laughs> You'll find out. Um, the the writing of a book is is purely a labor of love. I mean, you're not going to get rich at, you know, $25 a book, uh, regardless of how many of them you sell. But they're part of a platform. They're part of an ideology. They're part of it's either a message that you are capable of giving and you should give it. And I'm capable of giving it and I'm capable of putting it on paper. So, you know, I should make that message available to other people. And I understand some people are interested and some people are not. But if you're capable of giving it, you should put it down and share the message that's outstanding um and wrap this up but i want to tell you that in in this industry i almost didn't make it in this industry um i thought i was i thought i was going to lose my house Uh, the sky was falling down i tried out to become a firefighter your your books the training the irm the sales and marketing council it was part of the fuel that kept me going uh, day in and day out um if you're watching here on newhomesales.com, if I if I could share one tip that I've gotten from John is that the best the best people in the business are very generous. Um, John's you know, one of the legends. He travels all over. He'll answer my cell phone call when he's in Mexico and answer a sales question. I mean, you've been very generous with your time. Um, you know, to me personally, I'm not going to give a cell phone number out. But if you're out there and thinking, oh, he'll never want to talk to me. They never want to. He won't. John's one of the guys that he's at the top, but he's there to support and give and, and motivate. And I want to thank you um, very much for the impact that you've had on my sales career. 
and um, congratulations to all your success. One thing you may not know about John is that he's the producer of America's Dumbest cr uh, Criminals. And he was saying this has been out of the um, circulation for a while. Everybody knows that show. If you don't, it's a great show. I remember as a kid. So uh, again, this is Quint Lears with NewHomeSales.com. Very proud to uh, feature the legend, the man, John Palumbo. Thanks again, John. Any last words? Now, how did you get my cell phone number? <laughs>